Hello friends, welcome to your move slowly. This is a short 20 minute practice that you can do any time of the day. The amount of props that you have, the more the merrier. If you don't have a bolster, you could uh, roll up a, a quilt or you could have a few cushions off your bed, a couple of bricks or books, a strap or a scarf or something like that. Uh, and I've got this flat brick as well, which makes is quite good for sitting on. So if you do, have uh, one like that, please get it, or a folded blanket, might be useful as well. We're going to start lying down. So on your back, take your feet wide, let your knees knock together, and think about where you want to put your arms. This is called constructive rest. If this inward rotation shape isn't sort of feeling good for you today, we could always take more of an external rotation, so reclined butterfly. And like with all, all of the shapes, find something that works for you. So I'm gonna set a little timer. And we'll just stay here for a couple of minutes finding a bit of stillness in our day. Perhaps focusing on the breath, moving it in and out through the nose. If you find that your mind is very busy with thoughts, you're normal, Give your mind just something else to focus on. So that could be the breath, could be the feeling of the mat underneath you. So just gently steering your awareness from the busyness of the mind into the stillness of the body. And maybe cultivating a slower, more stretchy way of breathing. Finding a rhythm that works for you. So that might be a, a, a count of three as you breathe in and a count of three as you breathe out. Maybe that's slightly longer. What works for you? Just a few more breaths here. So depending on how you've positioned the legs, if you've taken more of a butterfly shape, use your hands to gently close the knees. And then separate your feet and we'll all meet with our feet hip width and parallelish, with knees sort of pointed up towards the sky. Take your strap or your scarf or the belt from your dressing gown, whatever you may have to hand. And then pick up your right foot Take the strap around the ball or the arch of the foot and then start to reach the heel up towards the sky. Soften your shoulders down onto the floor and you could even rest your elbows and your backs of your arms on the floor. Flex through that foot so we really start to feel the stretch in the calf muscle. And we're just going to hold there for one minute. And notice as we hold for a minute, anywhere that tension might start to creep in. So the shoulders might want to start to get involved. So every time you notice that, just let them sink towards the floor a little bit more. Every time the foot goes a bit floppy, maybe notice and perhaps explore reaching the heel up towards the sky. So for me, that feels a little bit uncomfortable because <laughs> I have really tight calf muscles. So every now and again, I might consciously choose to let my foot relax a bit before we come back into it. 
And that's okay. We're consciously starting to connect with our body. Just a few more breaths. And then very gently take the strap from around the foot, squeeze the knee in, and then let's take a full body stretch here. Put your fingers, point your toes. Oh, maybe have a little yawn. And then set yourself up on the other side. So feet flat to the floor, hip width-ish, parallel-ish. Pick up the left foot and take the strap around the ball or the arch, whatever you're more comfortable with. And then begin to stretch the heel up towards the sky. Keep the hips down on the floor. In fact, you might even pull that left hip down into the socket, down towards the floor a bit. And a minute here. Check in with your shoulders. Check in with your breathing. Can we keep that smooth, steady flow that we set up at the start? And remembering we can place the backs of the arms down on the floor if we choose. So for this practice, you might want to have some music on in the background or you may prefer just natural sounds. I don't think it matters. As long as it's not too distracting, we're trying to treat this uh, practice kind of like a meditation, but making crazy shapes for our body. Just a few more breaths here, 10 more seconds in fact. And then very gently soften the knee, give it a little squeeze. And extend your legs, extend your arms, full body stretch. Any yawning is greatly encouraged in this class. <sighs> Now, it may be that you choose to stay here like that, depending on the kind of day that you're having. Give your knees a little hug. Let's just rock that back into the floor. Check it how it feels. And then very gently rolling to whichever side feels accessible for you today. Take a little moment there. And then we're going to come all the way around onto our tummy for sphinx pose. So there's many different ways of doing sphinx pose. If you have a bolster, sometimes, not always, but it can feel nice to get that bolster right sort of underneath your chest, towards the armpits. We want the elbows and the forearms down on the floor. If that doesn't feel nice for you, uh, don't use it. We can do this shape with elbows on the floor, about uh, sort of shoulder width apart, palms down. There's gentle engagement in the legs. So there's a gentle squeeze of the bum, toes extending away, a gentle pushing down of the pubic bone into the floor to create that compression in the lower back. And then think about your chest moving forward with a slight bow of the head. We can hold this for, again, just a minute. If at any time you feel discomfort in your lower back or your sacrum, gently lower down and give your tail feathers a little bit of a shake. And if that feels like that's too high, you could always just lift up a little bit. The elbows are a bit more further forward. So always finding something that works for you. Just a few more breaths here in Sphinx. Ten more seconds. Mm -hmm. 
So very carefully, very slowly, lower yourself down. Place your forehead on the backs of your hands. Release any engagement that you might have in the legs or the glutes and just swish your hips from side to side. It might be that you choose to stay here or you could press yourself back into either a wide knee child's pose. Now obviously you're gonna feel a stretch in your lower back here or a closed knee child's pose, which might create a greater stretch in the lower back. So I'm gonna just make a little support from my forehead. You could use bricks. And then think about breathing nice and deeply into the back of the body here. Sometimes with these slower, stiller practices, there's a, a, a creator, the mind gets a little bit louder. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so acknowledge that if that's you. Acknowledge any thoughts that you might have and maybe pop them on a little shelf in your mind to come back to later and come back to the feeling of the breath in the body. Let's take five more breaths in. Okay. So come to find a kneeling shape. Now for many of us, this sort of sitting back on our heels may not feel so nice. So you can Keep the knees sort of towards one another, but separate the feet and then pop a brick in between your heels and you can sit back like this. You could also place two bricks side by side like that. Sometimes that feels quite nice to sit. Or you could stack the bricks one on top of the other like this. So find what works for you. Maybe that flat brick or the blanket, place it on your lap. Place the backs of the hands on there and explore a tall spine here. Imagine that there's a ball on the top of your head and you're trying to just gently push the ball up towards the sky, allowing the hips to stay grounded into whatever they're resting on. So sometimes this shape is nice for meditation. You don't always have to sit in the cross leg position. And we're just, again, holding this for one more minute. About 30 more seconds to go. So if you found that you closed your eyes, gently blink them open here. Remove anything that you might have on your lap. And then come into a tabletop position, separating the feet, the knees, whatever you need to do. And then just slowly slide your right foot away. You can press away through that right heel. You could also pick up the foot and just give it a very gentle circle from side to side. Maybe bounce the heel to the back of the mat. So just releasing that shape from our body. And then, of course, let's do that on the other side. 
So pressing away through the heel. Maybe there's a little circling going on. Okay. So setting ourselves up for um, a saddle uh, pose. We can have a bolster or even two bolsters for this. And I'm going to give you lots of different options as always. It might be that we choose to come back to this hero seat. So we can either sit on our heels and we could take the hands behind, keeping the knees on the floor, take the hands behind and push your shins into the ground, push your knees into the ground. We might start to feel a bit of a gentle stretch in the front of the quads here. Another thing we could do is we can separate the feet and sit on a brick. And we could repeat the same thing. Now, if the knees separate, that's okay. But uh, try not to let the knees lift off the floor. Keep the knees down. Another thing that we could do is take our trusty bolster and kind of pop it so it's pressed right up against uh, your sacrum, your, the top of your bum here. Now, I'm going to do this shape sitting on a brick because that just feels better for my lower back. It might be that your, your uh, seat is on the floor in between your heels. If you are sitting like that, no pressure in the knees. We're already in quite a lot of flexion here, so we don't want to put the knees under any more stress than they need to be. You might want a brick to place the back of the head on and slowly start to guide your back onto your bolster. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> now, if at any time you feel like your lower back is jammed or your sacrum is enjoying this, without twisting, please lift yourself up and come back to one of the other variations. There is loads of different ways you could stretch your quads. Please don't put your lower back under any pressure that it needs to be. Another thing you could do is Take one leg out and lie back. So let's start our timer. So if you are doing one leg at a time, we've got a minute on each side. And I'll let you know when to switch it over. Again, that brick at the back of the head, if that feels nice. That's not feeling so great for me. Really good, really good. Right where you want to place your hands, you can open the chest by taking them back to the side, perhaps. Hips are even. So if you're wonky in this shape, just lift your seat. We don't want to be leaning back with our hips sort of out of line. We want to keep our hips in line for this particular shape. Just a few more breaths before we switch legs. So if both knees are bent, stay as you are. If you've got one leg extended, without twisting, gently lift yourself up. We're simply going to switch it over, extend the other leg, come to lie down. So this is my oh, dodgy side. I'm going to be careful. <laughs> and then a minute here. Then, unlike me, who's fidgeting around, <laughs> see if you can find uh, some stillness. If you consciously want to come out of the shape or consciously moving to change it in some way, then that's great, of course. But try and find an expression of the shape that allows you to be still. Just a couple more breaths. So again, without twisting, without lifting the knees off the floor, 
gently hoist yourself up and take it into that tabletop again and very carefully round your back to the sky and maybe throw in a little wriggle, very gentle, soft movements. Don't need to ping out of the shape. Ease yourself into some sort of counter pose and maybe move through a few rounds of cat cow if that feels good. Or in your tabletop, you could extend one leg away again. And then the other. And to finish, a supported child's pose or Shavasana. So you could lie down, take a relaxation, set yourself a little timer and you can stay there for as long as you like. Or if you're taking child's pose, knees wide, big toes touch, a blanket or a flat brick between your bum and your heels if you find that it, there's a gap when you lean forward. With your knees wide, just gently draw the bolster towards you so that you can softly bring your chest down towards the floor. It might be you're bringing your forehead down or it might feel more comfortable to turn the head. Whatever feels right for you. Stay here for as long as you like and just find some rest and some stillness in the shape that you've chosen. 